We will be going over a few more examples a little bit later. Now, speaking of mixed costs, there's a way to do budget for mixed costs based upon early seasons information. You may be able to budget future seasons information based on this high-low method. Okay, we're still under the category mixed costs here, but we're introducing you a way to do budgeting, to do budget for mixed costs for future seasons. Okay, so there are three steps to do, to do this. This is assuming that you have information from prior seasons. Like earlier, we had 15 events and 212, 25 costs for equipment rental. Those information, if you're given a certain, um, certain level of past information, you, be, you will be able to, at the end, calculate a equation for you to do future budgeting, meaning after selling certain units, what is the cost that will be accumulated? If I expect later on there will be 100 or 200, based on past information, how am I able to expect the future cost that will be accumulated? Okay, so when you look at a few tables of information, just like earlier, the three months of information, first of all, calculate the slope. Okay, how we got the slope again, differences in x axis and the differences in y. So earlier we talked about 20 minus 15, and then 300 minus 225. So we already got this idea from variable cost. That basically is step one. Calculate variable cost per unit. Because remember, mixed cost has a portion of variable, has a portion of fixed. Okay, I'll go over the step part and then we'll apply it to one of the example. And once you have the variable cost, you already know it's $15 per rental of equipment, and you have the data points earlier. The data point means 15 events, you have 225 equipment rental cost. 20 events, you have $300 of rental cost. You have this $15 rental cost per event, just apply it to any of the data points earlier you got to calculate the fixed cost at the end. So meaning $15 per event, if you know this month we had 15 events, you know the variable cost is 225. And the total cost, of course, of mixed cost earlier will be adding a fixed portion. How are you getting the fixed portion? It will be based upon subtracting this 225 by the total cost of the information. Okay, so the second step here, you get the slope first, apply it to any of the data points to figure out the total variable cost. Then this total cost incurred from past season, this is a fact that you will know based on the information from previous months. Use this to minus the total variable cost to get fixed cost. Remember, we're talking about mixed cost over here. It's a portion fixed, a portion variable. Get the slope, plug it into any of the data points to figure out total variable costs, and use it to minus total cost to get fixed portion. And then, just put all the information together. That becomes an equation that you can use for budgeting purposes. Okay, we're going to apply it to one of the examples, so it will be more clear when you see the numbers. So the high-low method, the high and low means that you can pick the, from the total cost information for different seasons, pick the ones with the highest cost and the ones with the lowest cost as a starting point. Uh, in reality, you can actually use any two data points because remember, as long as you have two data points, you can figure out the changes in X, changes in Y. But it, the text was suggested to use the high, highest and the lowest just to figure out the just in case in the middle there were other data points that wasn't as accurate, the highest and the lowest you'll be able to figure out what is exactly the slope of the entire um, year or different years. So it's better to refer to the highest and lowest point. Okay, so let's take a look at this example. 
we have different quarters of information on certain events playing hours. Remember, we were referring to a DJ services company. And let's say they have been using certain equipment for certain hours and they have to maintain the machine or maintain certain instruments. So this is the information of using the equipment and the cost of maintenance that incurred. So you can see the first quarter events have been used. Event playing hours is 360 hours and we incurred maintenance costs of 1,720. And the second quarter, 415, you have obviously more cost incurred because there were more hours being used for that instrument or equipment. 480, even more cost incurred. And then the fourth quarter backed up to 240, so you can, say, you can see that it has the least maintenance cost of the all four quarters. So if we were to pick the highest and lowest point, again, the highest cost and lowest cost point, it will be the third quarter and the fourth quarter. Okay, so based on this information here, again, we're looking at mixed cost category. Mixed cost has both of variable and fixed cost. If we look at these numbers, can you tell me how we are able to calculate the slope? And then which one will be used to divide which? So the changes in the cost will be the y-axis, right? And then the changes in the event hours, remember earlier it was using the equipment, number of events will be the x-axis. So we have 480 minus 240, use this to divide 1,960 minus the lowest point, 1,480. So this will give us 240 for the denominator and numerator, 480. Right? So this will give us 2, and what is this? So the maintenance cost per hour. When we use the equipment for an hour, we have $2 of maintenance costs incurred, accumulated. So this is a variable portion. Remember, mixed cost, the variable portion has a rate that goes up. The slope will be $2 here. So you already figure out this first part here. We have $2 as the slope. You can actually do any two data points, okay? So if you pick any other ones, 480 minus 415, you can get the same slope, two dollars, okay? Okay, so what happens after this two? Remember at the end, we wanna to get to an equation for budgeting purposes for later on, so we need to know also the fixed cost. So just by this table, it doesn't tell us what is the fixed cost, but we can figure it out after we calculate this slope. So how do we use that number, $2? $2 is a variable cost, and if we pick the fourth quarter, let's say, we know that the event hours is 240, and this is related to $2 because 240 hours will incur, for each and every hour, you incur $2. So 240 hours, you will accumulate how many variable costs? 480, right? So the slope is $2, and we have just selecting either one of the quarter's information, the fourth quarter, let's say. 240 multiplied $2 will give you the total variable cost, 480. So you pick the two data points, calculate the slope first, and then plug the slope into the variable cost unit, 240. Multiply by two, you get the total variable cost for $80. And then how do we figure out what is the portion of fixed costs for the fourth quarter? So the total cost is an uh, addition of fixed cost and variable costs, and the total cost is 1,480. And now we know the variable cost is 480, so what is fixed cost? Not getting me, okay. Total cost is how much for fourth quarter? 1480. And we just calculated the variable cost. It's a thousand, it's a thousand fixed cost, right? Because the variable cost is 480. We use the slope to multiply the number of hours being used, 480. 240 multiply 2, yes. 
two dollars from any quarter. We get the fixed cost by using the total cost minus the variable cost. Okay, so the total cost for the fourth quarter is 1,480 minus 480 variable cost. You can get a fixed cost for $1,000 for the fourth quarter. And does it work for the third and the second? We can do the same calculation again. We know the slope, which is the variable cost that we will use for each and every quarter. The third quarter we have 480 hours. So we multiply this by $2 to get the total variable cost, which is $960. And then the third quarter total cost is $1,960. This is total. We minus the variable cost. This will give us the fixed cost portion, again, $1,000. Okay, same works for the second quarter. Second quarter, we have 415 of events hour that incurred. Every hour will give us $2 of machine maintenance cost. This is the variable portion. So we have 830 variable cost. And then the total cost for that season is 1,830. So again, your fixed cost is $1,000. So remember, this is the fixed portion. So every season is the same. Okay, so if you put all these information together, you should be able to get a general equation just based on these data points. Total cost would equal the fixed portion, multiply $2 of whichever hours incurred. This is what we're trying to get to at the end. We, based on this table, we find out first of all what is the B and then what is the A and then use this equation to do future seasons budgeting. This will be the total cost at the end, right? Step one is the slope. Just the equation itself, yes. yes. Okay, step one, we're trying to figure out the slope, the $2, based on picking whichever two points, the textbook suggested the highest and lowest point. Okay, so the differences between x-axis and y-axis, you can figure out this $2 first. Then plug it in any data points. So you have the total variable cost. Then use it to subtract the total cost to figure out what is the fixed portion. And just put it together in an equation. So what is this useful for? Meaning that, let's say the fifth or next year, next year's first quarter, we assume that probably it's a low season, we will only be using the equipment for 100 hours in the events. So in this case, the budgeted total cost would be 1,000 plus the expected 100 multiplied by 2, which would equal 1,200. Okay, so we're using past season to do budgeting. We're touching upon a little bit on budgeting's idea using past information to see what will be the future maintenance cost incurred. Okay, I forget about to list all these. So again, step one, slope of the variable cost. Again, that is a variable cost because the more even hours being used, being incurred, then the more ma machine maintenance cost will be accumulated. So we find the differences in the number of event hours and the differences in total cost and find the ratio relationship between those two numbers. So it will give us $2, meaning each and every event hours will incur $2 of variable cost, maintenance cost. Then we use this $2 multiply by any quarter's information. This example here will be the third quarter. So you get this total variable cost, 960, and then subtract it from the total cost to figure out the fixed portion. Okay, so every, each and every season, the fixed portion is the same, so you can just use whichever data points. You can also use 240. Multiply by 2, you get 480 here, and then the total cost is 1,480, so the difference is, again, is $1,000. After this, put all the information together. You can find an equation, total equipment, machine maintenance cost, Y, equals 2 multiplied by hours, which is the slope multiplied by the units that actually incurred plus the fixed portion of 1,000. So 
So again, here's an example. Let's say next season we'll be using the equipment for 400 hours on our events. The 400 multiplied by 2, variable cost is 800, plus the fixed portion 1,000, 1,800. Okay, so to double check this equation, just plug in each and every event's information, see if you get the total cost as the table shows. Then you will know whether you have figured out the numbers right, the slope and the intercept, which is the fixed cost. 